All right, so this is the second question from 2018. It's called word pair. Um, we don't know what a word pair is, but if we want to make one, here's the rule. Give it two strings, and it does its magic and makes a word pair. I don't know how. Don't care. Um, and then it's got two methods, get first, get second, that can go extract the either string from that word pair, which one's been labeled first and one's been labeled second. Okay. Um, I'm going to write uh, code in a class where I'm writing a constructor and a method. Anytime I see constructor, um, I know that there's some special things that I need to do. And sure enough, this class has an array list as an instance field. It's going to be the constructor's job to initialize that array list. Okay. So before I do anything else in my constructor, that's job one. Um, otherwise, I can't actually use this list called all pairs. All pairs has been typed as word pair. That's not string. That's a user-defined class that I never heard of until I read this question. That means that anything that I get from this list is a word pair. Word pairs can do two things, get first, get second. Nothing else that I know of. If I would like to add something to this list, okay, then it has to be encapsulated as a word pair object. And that means I'll have to use the word pair constructor to create one. The word pair constructor can only be used if it has been handed two strings, okay? They are handing me an array of strings as I write this constructor. From that array, I will take two strings and I will hand the two strings to the word pair constructor. It will return to me, I shouldn't say return, it will, it will create a word pair object reference for me which I can then add into my list called all pairs, all right? So that's what the constructor is going to do. Uh, and then later, I'll take this list of word pairs and consider how many matches it has. So I'll be taking things out of the list. I'll be able then to use the methods of the word pair class, and I'll see how many times I get a match between first and second. Part B is actually pretty easy for this question. Uh, in part A, though, we have to know how to construct things. And again, this goes back to that idea that I was mentioning um, when we looked at question one, methods and control structures, right? Handling a user-defined class, maybe creating objects from one, all right? So uh, this is also maybe something, concepts that we'd see like in our question two. All right, so as I start writing this code, um, how do I create the word pairs? Well, they've gone back to this sort of is diverse thing that we saw in an earlier problem. So this is a real common theme with the College Board. And as we do these problems together, that's one of the things we should be looking at is like for common you know, algorithms, things that they find important. That's gonna help us take our test. So if they give me four strings like they did in example two, there's six word pairs that are created. Okay, so notice what they did. They took the word the, that's the first string in the array, and they paired it with the other three words, the words, as they said here, that came later in the array. So the got paired with more, the, and merrier. So there actually was a case where the word the showed up twice um, in the same word pair, okay? Then they took the word more and they paired it with the words that came later in the array. So what came later in the array after more? The and merrier. So that's my like kind of pink line there. So these two uh, word pairs here were created. And then they made it to the word the. Now notice that they didn't take the word the and go backwards in the array. So we don't see like the, the appear again. We don't see the more appear again, but we do see the merrier. That's another one here, okay? And the reason that's twice in this list is because there were two word does that could pair with the word merrier. This is a similar algorithm we did earlier um, with, with something called is diverse, and we've seen it in other things too. This is, this is a pretty common algorithm that College Board would like you to be able to write. Even though it's a one-dimensional array, we're going to use two loops. We're going to use one loop to grab an object, and we're going to use a second loop to grab all of the remaining objects to create these pairs. Okay, so it's a one dimensional storage system, but we're gonna move through it with two different loops. This is not a matrix, okay? So this is still something that we might see on our 2020 exam. All right, but before I even worry about that, don't forget job one is to take all pairs and formally initialize it as a new array list, okay? 
that has been constructed to hold word pair objects. All right, until you do that, you can't do anything with the list. And notice that I have not redeclared it. It's already been declared, now I'm initializing it. Okay, at this point, I need to start adding things to it. And this is where that diverse loop structure is gonna show up. So I'm gonna write one loop that's gonna grab from this array called words, one of its strings. Now, technically here, I would like to end this loop one shy of the end. Although if you don't do that, it won't matter. Your code would still work. The reason I'm doing that is, is notice as I was making these word pairs, there was no need for me to take the last string, in this case, Marrier, and try to make a word pair from it because there are no strings then that appear later in the array. So it, it's just not needed. But if you didn't put it your code, the way we're gonna write the inside loop would actually correct this anyway, even if you forgot that. So it's not, it's not really a big deal, all right? So my inside loop is not going to start at index zero. That's very important. The inside loop is selecting the words to make pairs. And these are the words that come later in the array. So we're gonna start this loop at index i plus one. And again, that's that kind of common algorithm little trick that we've seen in a few others. This one, you do need to let reach the very end of the array. Don't stop this loop one index early. Um, and that's because like when I took the word the, I paired it with all of the words that came after it, including Marrier, the last indexed word within that array. So we need to let this index, which is choosing the remaining words, uh, access everything. Okay, at this point, I have access to two strings through these indexes. I can grab words i and I can grab words j. The reason I want to grab two strings, don't forget, this is crucial, is because the constructor of the word pair class is saying, hand me two strings. If you would like to make a word pair, a new word pair, you need to hand it two strings. The whole reason I created these indexes then is so that I could create a word pair, okay? And my word pair will be a new word pair, all right? And it's gonna have words bracket I as one of them and words bracket J as the other, okay? Uh, and so anytime I have two strings available to me, I can make a word pair. Anytime I have a word pair, I can add my word pair to my list called all pairs, which remember was built to only hold word pair object references. And that's, that's exactly what we have, right? And you could do this in one line of code, okay? So you could just say all pairs dot add new word pair and that'd be fine, all right? But don't lose, don't lose sight of like what this is. This is object oriented programming right here. Okay, this is, this is what we need to be able to handle. All right, that takes care of part A. We've now constructed this list and it's got all of the possible word pairs belonging to it. Now we just need to go through the list and count how many times there's a match. A match would be like when the word the shows up twice. Remember that every word pair has access to its first and its second value. So all I'm gonna need to do is walk through all of the word pairs one at a time, get their first, get their second, those are strings, so to compare them, I'll use the dot equals method. If they're equal, I'll count it, and then I'll return it later. Nothing is handed to this method, okay? So when we're writing code in part B, notice that it's a parameterless method. So you have to use the instance field that belongs to the class, which was called all pairs. All right, so basic counter method, okay? And, uh, we'll just write one loop. The, the best way to write this loop would be as an enhanced for loop because we don't care how we access these in what order or anything. So just go ahead and hand me one of those word pairs from the list named all pairs. And then I have a question for you based on that word pair, okay? If I take that word pair and I get the first string that belongs to it, okay? Does that string equals Okay, the word pairs second string that belongs to it. And if it does, then I want to count it, okay? And then later I'll just return the count and uh, I, hopefully my tester case will tell us if it's working or not. Let's see what it does. 
so again, just some of the object, yeah, it should get zero, one, two. So I fed it some different cases here and we got the correct values. So again, from the, from the list, we're getting a word pair. From a word pair, you can get a string, okay? And there's two different ways to get a string. You can get the first string that belongs to it or you can get the second. If you have two strings, you're allowed to ask if they equals. That's a string class uh, method that we've used all year. It's a Boolean. If it comes back and says true, we'll count it. Otherwise, this line wouldn't run, okay? All right, so this is a, a great object-oriented programming review problem. You could definitely see something like this as the first question of your AP exam this year.